not a subject your average teenager wants to talk about. I mean, we are teenagers, and we have many, many years before we have to think about that. So you can imagine my surprise when I walk into my Sunday school class and sitting at the front of the class was a large coffin. That's right, a coffin. Of course, this new addition had the whole class buzzing. We were still talking about the coffin when our Sunday school teacher walked into the room. Brother David seemed different on this particular morning. Serious and, I don't know, sad. He opened by saying, I'm sure most of you are curious about today's lesson and are wondering why there's a coffin sitting at the front of the room. We all shook our heads in agreement. He said, as some of you might know, this past week has been a hard one for me. I had to attend the funeral of a beautiful 16-year-old girl who was killed in a car accident. I know some of you all knew her, and some of you also went to the funeral. The mood in our class was immediately serious. Even those of us who did not know her personally were saddened by the death of this popular girl in our small town. He went on. What most of you do not know is that I stood at the front of the casket trying to give support to my friend and his family. And I got to listen to 100 to 200 young people as they filed past Emily's casket. I heard comments like, she sure knew how to party, or she loved cheerleading. It was her life. I overheard boys and girls comment on how pretty she was and how she was the life of the party. Her friends commented on how her cell phone never left her hand and how she could shop for hours, even days on end, and never get tired. I kept listening, hoping to hear something, anything about her relationship with God. The same God she went to meet last Tuesday. Unfortunately, to my grief, I never heard one. Not one of her friends mentioned her walk with Christ. The death of this precious girl reminded me of each of you in this class. You think you're going to sow your proverbial wild oats and get right with God on your terms? And then, when you're old and feeble, you'll move peaceably on to heaven? I'm sure Emily thought that too. But guess what? You are not promised a long life. You have absolutely no guarantee that you'll live to see another day. James 4.14 says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. So today, February 20th, 2022, we're going to hold your funeral. The class was kind of shocked by this statement. Brother David had our full attention. He began passing out slips of paper and pens to each of the teenagers in our class. Then he went to the front of the class and began setting up framed photographs on a table next to the coffin. I was surprised when he set my photo on the table. He had a picture of every teenager in our class. Brother David held my picture up first. He set it on top of the casket. He told the class to write down a favorite memory, a story, or even a talent they admired. And then he asked the class to answer this question. Based on what you've seen from Olivia's life, do you think Olivia is a Christian and heaven will be her home? He continued the same process with every person in our class. He told us not to sign the slips of paper, and at the end of the Sunday school period, he handed the slips of paper back to each of us. I remember I couldn't wait to get home to see what my peers had to say about me. I opened up the first one. It was a memory about camp, which made me smile. There are comments about me loving music, Chick-fil-A, my total obsession with shoes, and my love for volleyball. But when it got to the part about me being a Christian, the answers were probably, I guess, She's a nice girl, maybe. There was a, even a, I'm not really sure. At first, 
I was furious. All of my friends know that I'm a Christian. But in an instant, my conscience said, do they really? In that one convicting moment, I realized that Brother David was right. I was living my life like I had all the time in the world to serve God. I was a teenager, worried about teenage things. I certainly had no thought that my life could be over at the age of 16. The day I was able to attend my own funeral was the day that changed my way of living and thinking forever. So what about you? Imagine that today was your funeral and we had each of your friends and family write down about your spiritual life and your walk with Christ. Would you dread to read the answers? Would you be shocked by the replies? Remember, old or young, you're not promised a long life. So every day must be lived to answer this one eternal question. What is your life?